tell us what you think of vertical dimension, just briefly, in general. Does it change on its own? Is it trying to go back to a certain place? Why do we see those patients with the worn down dentition over the years? Everything's flattened out. I know that every individual patient is unique, but in general, where are they looking to go? Where's their system looking to go? Well, number one, they're, <clears throat> they're a relatively unusual patient in whom you see the following. It's relatively unusual to see a patient who has normal joint foundations yeah. and totally flat worn teeth, okay? Most of those patients have joint damage, okay? And <clears throat> if, if you think about it, just, just in general terms, uh, when you lose vertical dimension in the TMJ, we've talked about the back teeth getting premature, Sure. But there's a horizontal component, and the horizontal component is that loss of vertical height here loses horizontal projection in the mandible. And so in the, in the classical TMJ foundational injury, there is progression of the bite towards a class 2 bite. Mm. Okay? Now, bruxism can actually help people adapt. Okay, that's important, and it's helping the bite yeah. adapt to what the joint did. So we we've made bruxism the enemy, right. but if you look at if you look at at what bruxism does in the system, what bruxism does is it decreases the vertical dimension of the posterior teeth, yeah. and the adaptation of the system is this vertical dimension in the joint is already decreased. As we decrease the vertical dimension in the teeth, we're correcting those prematurities on the back teeth, but you know what else corrects? The class two tendency mm. tends to correct back towards class one, okay? The horizontal component. The horizontal component, the end point, is correction back to anterior guidance again. Right. So left totally alone, some of these patients, you know, they'll have horribly worn dentition, uh, but when you look at them, they're actually adapting their bite to exactly what happened in the TMJ. Right. And that may be their endpoint. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now if you go back and, and um, look at the second subset, the second subset is the subset that has no change in the foundation at all. Foundation right. is totally stable. Okay? If they break down their back teeth from bruxism, they tend to go from class two to class three, okay? Because again, any loss of vertical dimension in the TM or in the teeth will horizontally shift the mandible more towards class three, okay? Interesting. And so they start class one, have a normal foundation, they go from class one to class three with worn teeth. If they have an abnormal foundation, now the teeth are adapting to the abnormal foundation and they go from class two to class one. So see, there are two subsets. And that's what I'm saying. In the worn dentition, if I, did, if I didn't have imaging and I tried to read the bite and figure out, you know, is, what's going on with this? dentition and this older male or whatever with uh, huge muscles and and very very flat teeth yeah. obviously you look at the teeth and there's been a loss of vertical dimension which subset are they I uh, I base it all on are they are they class one or two in which case I'm thinking joint foundation mm -hmm. or are they class one to class three in which case I'm thinking, you know, the joint foundation may be okay. This may just be a chronic bruxer who's worn those teeth. Could it also be some with a hyperplastic uh, condylar head, potentially bilateral? Well, in the hyperplastic condylar head, you'll get anterior wear without the posterior wear. Mm. Okay? Hyperplastic condyl is going to push the whole mandible forward. You'll wear the front teeth, but the back teeth will be preserved. Got it. Okay. Yeah, interesting. So not not exactly the same.